Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisans of Vool, and in this video we're talking through everything to do with the inset function. So what I've done is set up a load of shapes here and we're going to go through everything to do with the inset tool. All of those little sub options that you can click and possibly more importantly some tricks that are going to allow you to get the most out of some of these functions because one or two of them don't seem that handy until you realise what you can do with them. So let's start with the basics. I'm going to go into edit mode and we're going to be in face mode importantly. And the basic function of the inset is that I can click I and we then inset this a certain amount and then click and we've got that inset. So it's pretty easy to use as a base idea. Now there is a little bit more to that. If we just switch over to this one, if I press I, we can also hold down control and that's gonna allow us to move this in or out which is really nice. So that is a very useful function to have and you can see in the top left hand corner you get that depth as well so you can know how far you're doing this. And that's called the tweak option though here when you've got your inset face box that if it's too small you just click to make it bigger you can still come back and modify all of these and at that point it's called depth. So for this one we've also got if I have a load of faces selected if I press I to inset these we can see that this is not insetting very nicely. We get this horrible, weird deformation. And that's because it's not insetting these edges in a way that makes sense to us visually, but the mathematics of Blender does make sense. If we come over to here and select a load of other ones, we can make this much nicer if we just press I and then we come in and we can't do this here, but if I get to a certain amount and then I come and check the offset even box, you'll see that that will even out all of these edges. So they're more straight. Now what I generally do at that point is undo it and then I again, and we get a much more equal, well, offset. So an even offset all the way around. Though this does mean that we deform some of the internal faces a little bit more. Next up, if we've got multiple faces, we can firstly just I to inset all of them if they're selected. So we can do this on multiple faces at the same time, or if we select all those faces, we can press I and then hit I again, and it will inset these individually, which I think is a really, really handy tool because it saves us a lot of time and means that they're definitely going to be all of the same distance in terms of those insets. Now with that combined, if we come over to here, and we press A to make sure every single face is selected, we can do some really cool combinations. So for example, I could I to inset, and then I to inset again, but this time hold down control and tweak everything in. And you can see that we've got these options here in the bottom left hand corner, and it highlights nicely if we're holding control or if we're doing some of those other functions like boundary, individual or outset. Now it's worth noting here is when this tweak function happens, it is working off the normals of these, so it won't try and offset them all in the same direction. It's doing it relative to the direction the face is facing, which is really handy that it does that automatically, and you can really quickly create some really cool shapes. Now the next one of these options is to do an outset. I imagine you can guess what that is, but there's something you need to be aware of here. If we press I, we do our inset. If I hit O, it allows it to also do an outset, but at the moment, I can't do that and that's because at the moment we've even though I'm selecting one face got individual on you can see that because it's highlighted at the bottom which stops you getting confused it's a really nice change to blender that they're highlighting these so if I press I again to get rid of the individual you can see that we're now outsetting everything and this is in this instance not doing a particularly interesting job we could pretty much do this using an edge cut but it is there and this is quite useful if you want to do something like there and then I there with offset turned off to put in some boundary loops. Where it becomes more useful is a shape like this, where if we have a look at this, we can just I and that will inset in, or we can hit O and that will outset everything to make it wider. And you can see how we get this deformation around this shape. Now what's worth noting is that if we come to the other shape, if I outset here, we can still do the tweak. So we can still hold down control, but that tweaks again that middle section. It doesn't tweak the outer section that is the bit that's actually moving in the instance of an outset. So something to be a little bit careful with there. Next up, we've got the boundary function. Now this is really cool, but I think a lot of people don't know how to use it and there's some limitations to this we need to be aware of. So if I press I to inset this, let's O to make it not be an outset. This is what we normally assume the inset is doing. 
which is working off all of the boundaries. Now, if we hit the B button, what that will do is change to just work on where this edge actually has boundaries, basically where it connects to another face. It connects to all the other faces here along these edges, so it's only insetting it off those. Now, this has a lot of potential as a function, but there's a few limits to it. The main one being, if we come over here, is that you can't do it to multiple faces at once. If I press I here, it's not working. And if I turn it into individual, it automatically turns that off. So what we can't do is use this individually to make, let's say, a big cross in the middle. What we'd have to do is just press I there, and we can type in a thickness, so let's say 0 0.2, and then we're gonna have to do that to each one individually, 0 0.2, and then so on. So that's slightly annoying. I'm not the biggest fan of that. I wish you could do it to multiple faces at the same time, but you can't, and realistically, that was a very slow way to do it. You'd actually be much better off using a mirror function, but that is a limitation to it. Now, there are some really cool tricks that you can start doing with this. So if you come into this object here, which is a cube, and obviously it's connected on all the sides, if we go into vertex mode and select this vertex here, we can pull this away because at the moment, if we're in face mode, then when we select this and we eye, even if we're using this non-boundary option, it's connected on all edges. So it's just going to do a normal inset. What we can do instead is in vertex mode, select this vertex and use the vertex ripping function, which is V. We basically rip that away. It makes a second vertex in the place where it originally was. And we can press escape so that they're now on top of each other. If I come back in face mode and then I now, we can now use the fact that these faces aren't actually connected to be able to use this function really nicely. Now again, it'd be great if this could do it multiple faces at the same time, so we could do it to the other side, but we can't. And this does have a really big problem with it, which we'll talk about how to deal with. And that is that if we select this vertex and G, they're not connected. So that's a big problem. Now, we can use the standard things that we normally would do in Blender to reconnect these. So what I'm gonna do is press A, and then M and then merge by distance. And that means that now these are connected. But because this edge that was here, let's just move this back, because this edge doesn't have a vertex at the point where this one does, just here, this still leaves a hole in a non-manifold mesh. This is a problem. We definitely don't want this. So if we come over here and do exactly the same thing again, so I'm gonna grab that vert, I'm gonna V to rip it off. I've got a link in the description to a video that has a look at some other functions and things that we can do with ripping. So do feel free to check that out if you're interested. Let's do this face, let's I to inset here, and we're gonna solve this problem again, but we're gonna use a different strategy. Let's go into vertex mode and A to select everything. What we're gonna do is turn on our auto merge vertices, and importantly, we're gonna come up here to the split edges and faces function. What that's gonna do is try to merge every single vertex to an edge if it's next to it, which includes this vertex here is gonna to want to merge with that edge, but there isn't a vertex, so it's gonna create one and join it together. So the way we need to do that is to tell it to move and then to do it. So all we're gonna do is hit G, and at this point it's in theory being grabbed, so it's moving around. I've got my hand off of my mouse, and then we'll just hit enter, and what that's done is it's split all of these edges wherever necessary. So now I can G here and you can see all of these vertices have been joined back together. So suddenly we can use this auto mode vertices and the split edge and faces option to be able to manipulate this boundary function as we choose to. I find that really handy in a lot of situations because it means we can create this shape very, very quickly if we need to. Next, we've got this shape and we're making, let's say something like a column. And let's come in here and we'll go into face mode, shift and Z to X-ray mode, and we'll select all of these faces in the middle. And we want to insert them all together. So I'm gonna just come into side view so that it's really easy to see. And I'm gonna press I, and you can see this is possibly not the functionality you'd expect. It is averaging out the position between our vertices here and here and then making this inset come in in a shape that's probably quite undesirable. We don't like that. Now this is really easy to solve. We do it down here. We just click that edge rail button and now it is going to, if we just undo it, keep doing that same function and this is probably more of what we expected.
So again, we can turn that on and off depending on if we find it useful. So that's how we use the edge rail. Now coming up, we've got the offset relative, which is the next function in this box. So let's have a look at how we might find this useful. Now this actually is just a way to change how you're thinking about your offset. So here, this is a cube and it's relatively wide, but you can see that our thickness, again in the top left hand corner, is measured in whatever units we're using. So for example, I could put this in approximately one unit or I could type one to have one unit of our inset. That's because we're not using the offset relative. If we come over here, oh, in case you don't know, the way I'm swapping between edit mode between each of these objects is if you press Alt and Q, you stay in the same edit mode and you just swap objects. It's much quicker than having to change into object mode, come here and change back into edit mode. Even if you're using the tab button, I still think it's quicker because you're not having to change in and change out. So if we just I here, now we're not gonna be able to do this automatically. There's not a button for it. But if I change this to offset relative, you'll notice that it's suddenly gone far too far because it's got a thickness of 0 0.7. So let's bring that down here. Now, what we've got is that our thickness then becomes zero, but it is relative to the size of the object. So bear in mind, we're going to the center, that is 50%, so 0 0.5. So 0 0.5 gets us a perfect central point. So this is quite useful. Say you want to go in just half the way and you don't know the size of the object, all you need to do is put 0 0.25 and then we've got, well, I guess a quarter of the way in the overall object or half the way to the center. So relative offset's quite useful depending on if you want to do this as a proportion, that's what relative offset's doing, or if you want to do it as a flat off thickness in terms of the units that we've got set up on our Blender file. Next, we've actually gone through most of this, so we've done our outset, I'm not gonna mention that again, but I do want to mention the select outer. This is an amazing function. It's just really simple and actually is very useful if you're gonna use it repetitively. So say I I to inset this, it's always keeping that central face selected, which is very useful in many instances. I could want to extrude this up and create an object like that or bring it back in. So this depends on how you're thinking about this. If I know that this overall height is what I want that height to be. Let's look in X-ray mode. I might inset it and then extrude down. But it might be that I actually want to inset this and then I know what this height is. I want to move everything on the outside, the bit that I've inset into. So if you click select outer, that will then have that automatically selected. I'll just undo that and do this again so you can see that it keeps that functionality and you can see that it's selecting those outer portions and then I can extrude this up. I find this really handy when making things like the top roofs of buildings and I want to have a raised edge around all of them or maybe for the barrel of a gun or something like that. So really helpful there. Oh, I've got mixed around. There we go, we should be this way. So next up, and we've got the function that I personally find the least useful, but I'll mention it because it is the last one on our list. Let's just I to do that and then just take that off, select outer, and just mention we're gonna talk about the interpolate function. And I'm pretty sure that is on as standard. Let's take that off and let's take the edge rails off. So let's just undo this and talk about what this is gonna do. This is all about maintaining something that works sensibly with things like weight painting or bevel weights and things like that. So what I'm gonna do is come into our weight painting here and I've painted this vertex and I'll paint that one and this one and that one. So we can see how that has added weight and it's colored in red to each of these vertices. Let's go into edit mode and we'll have a look at the vertices. So these vertices, now if we come into object mode and shift and D to duplicate this, if we start editing each of these, let's go into edit mode and then we'll go into face mode and once again, we're gonna inset those, but we'll do an outset so we've got that working there with the interpolate on for this one. And then we're gonna do exactly the same thing here. So let's I and then outset, but turn the interpolate off. This is gonna have an effect on the weight painting. If we come into our weight paint, you can see here that with the interpolation on, it has kept the vertex here as red and the same here. But the vertices that have now been moved off of this because of the outset there and here, here and here, it has interpolated those and put them at a value that's halfway between the red and well the blue that was on these outer edges and it's worked out in terms of how far we've inset it well outset in this instance 
that that far means that it needs to be this color. But on this one, you'll notice that it hasn't done that. Instead, what we've got, I'm just gonna quickly show this in edit mode to make this clear that we've got these vertices here, let's go back to weight paint, is what that's done is instead of interpolating it and working out that we've got vertices here, 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 and here, and then to work out the relative value they should be, instead it's kept these vertices that have shifted off of it the same value as what the original vertices were. And that's a very important difference, is that interpolation will sort of work out the middle value or the relative middle value, depending on how far you move. I'll demonstrate that in a second in a way that's probably a little bit easier to see. And the non-interpolated version will keep it as the same value as the vertices that you're coming off of. This is likely to be really useful, or at least to know the difference, if you've got weight painting on things and you're coming back to edit something like a rig. Now, if we just come to this last object, let's go back into edit mode and come to this one. I'm gonna demonstrate this in a slightly different way, this time using bevel weights. So if I select those and press N, and we're gonna put up our vertex bevel weight to one for these. So we've got each one of these is one, each one of these is zero. So everything around the outside is zero. If we just come and make a duplicate of this, so let's bring that there and then come back into this one, what we'll do is the same thing again. So let's select these. We're gonna I and outset them and we'll move that here. And let's do actually this part way. So notice that this is probably about a quarter of the way from the different objects. And we're gonna make this interpolated and then we'll do the same thing over here. So let's select those. And then once again, we'll outset them and then we'll do this a similar distance, but we'll turn the interpolate off. Here we've got them as one, and here we've got them as one as well, because it's not been interpolated, so we've got exactly the same bevel weight for all of them. Whereas if we come here, we've got the bevel weight of one, and then this one, which was partly moved towards this, has worked out that, well, in terms of the distance that we could move all of the way here, this has moved about 20%, well, 19% to leave a bevel weight of 81. Now, if we just come back and let's go back and undo all of this, just to demonstrate what we can also do with this, that means that if I use this outset and go much further, let's turn the interpolate on, this one now is gonna be one, and that one is gonna be, in this instance, 25. Oh, that was a good guess, 75% of the way there. I haven't really come up with a massive use for this in terms of bevel weight yet. If you can think of a really good one, hit me up in the comments section. I'd be really interested to hear what people come up with but I think it's something that's useful to know that it's there, especially for the weight painting, and this was quite a nice numerical demonstration of exactly what it does. So hopefully that was useful. It gives you some good ideas of what we can do with the inset function, and I've given you a couple of little tricks that you might wanna try out that will hopefully in the future save you a load of time. If you did find that helpful or there was something new in this that you haven't seen before, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button. It always helps with sharing the video around and makes it easier for people to find these demonstrations if they're new to Blender or even if they're not and they wanna get some new ideas of what they can do with these functions. Have a great day, guys.